There are lots of great solutions for data validation within JavaScript, but only recently have we got libraries that provide a great feature set along with great type safety. And that's exactly what we will look at in this lesson. So let's go. Consider a simple API that has a well-defined payload, which are objects that contain a message property of type string. And we will store this payload in an in-memory database that is just a local variable. Our API will return this data whenever there is a GET request to our API, and they can modify this data by making a POST request with the new payload. We update the payload message property with the passed in request body. So now when the user makes another request to GET, they will get this updated object. And we can see this in action when we make the initial GET request, we get the initial value of the payload, and then we can modify it, for example, add a rows at the end. And now when we make feature requests to GET, we get this updated value. Now, if you've worked with user provided inputs in the past, you can probably see an obvious issue over here. If the input payload is invalid, for example, here we have a misspelling in the message property name, we are going to end up corrupting the database. On future get requests, we're going to get an empty object because there is no message property on the payload anymore. This is just one of the many use cases for data validation and we will add that using a type first data validation library called Zod. One great thing about Zod is that it comes as a single package that we can install by running npm i Zod. With the installation out of the way, we can bring in the Z named import. Now, instead of defining the type for the payload using TypeScript, we will define the schema for the payload using Zod. Our payload will be an object which we define using z.object. It will have a message property of type string which we define as z.string. We don't want to allow any extra properties on our payload which we configure by using the object.strict method. Now our schema is a runtime JavaScript variable. However, because Zod is a type first library, it supports inferring the TypeScript type from a given schema using z.infer. And as we can see by hovering over the payload type, it has inferred that payload is something that has a message property of type string. And that's a fundamental concept within Zod. We define our schema using JavaScript and then infer the TypeScript type using z.infer. And now, instead of just blindly trusting the payload, we can validate the runtime types of our objects by using this runtime JavaScript variable payload schema. The schema provides a method called safeparse that takes a JavaScript object and ensures that it conforms to the defined schema. If the object does not conform, then success will be false. In this particular case, we will return a response 400 and we will use the error property of this parsed value, which will contain the details why this object does not conform to the schema. Otherwise, we can be ensured that the object conforms and we can safely read its message property from parse.data. And that's it for validating using a defined schema. Use the safe parse method, check if it is successful using parse.success. If it is not, return parse.error. Otherwise, access the successful data using parse.data. With this validation in place, we can still get the original object. We can modify it with a valid request. And then when we make another get, we are returned this modified object. However, if we make an invalid request, we are returned an error object. There are two errors over here. One is that the required message property is missing. And the second error is that we are providing an extra property called massage that is not a part of the defined schema. Because we have correctly identified and returned an error message in this particular case, our original payload is still correct, which we can verify by making a get request. I'll wrap things up there. If you are curious about why I'm using safe pass instead of some exception based validation method, here is a lesson from the clean code series that digs into that a bit more. Thank you for joining me. Smash that like and subscribe for more quick tips and tutorials like this. And I will see you in the next one.